Corner syndrome. Now there are these three words that you have to remember OSP. It is also known as OSP or ocular sympathetic paralysis. Horner syndrome is also known as ocular sympathetic paralysis and the three components as we know are ptosis number one, meiosis number two and anhydrosis number three. Ptosis, meiosis and hydrosis. Immediately as soon as you hear this Horner syndrome, these are the three words that will have to strike you. Fourth feature however is anophthalmus. Anophthalmus is opposite of exophthalmus. The eye appears as if it is dragged inside into the orbital cavity. It is not a part of the Horner syndrome. Only these three are a part because it is not a true anophthalmus. Okay. Now let's understand why it is not a true anophthalmus. Normally what happens is that the lower eyelid is present at the limbus. Okay. Okay, this is my eyeball, this is the upper eyelid, this, this is the cornea, okay. The upper eyelid covers 2 mm of the superior cornea whereas the lower eyelid just touches the limbus, okay. Now this is because of the inferior tarsal muscle and the upper eyelid is con uh, controlled by the Mueller's muscle. Both of these muscles are supplied by the sympathetic system. So, as we have seen in OSP, that is in Horner's, there is oculosympathetic paralysis. So, Miller's muscle is affected, causing ptosis, as well as inferior tarsal muscle is also affected. So, when this, uh, so the lid muscle, the upper lid muscle, the Miller's muscle is affected, we can understand the lid drops down by a little bit because the main constrictor, the main uh, elevator of the upper eyelid is your levator palpebrae superioris. Uh, however, if the Mueller's is par paralyzed, there is a mild ptosis and if the inferior tarsal muscle whose function is to keep the lower lid down, it pulls the lower lid downwards. So, when this muscle is paralyzed, you can understand that it will start moving up a little bit, that the lower lid rises up. This condition is called inverse ptosis. It can be asked as a question. So, inverse ptosis or reverse ptosis is seen in Horner syndrome and all of this inverse ptosis along with a mild doses of the upper eyelid gives us an impression of anophthalmus so it is called pseudo anophthalmus okay is this clear now there are two types of Horner syndrome congenital and acquired let's look at let's compare both of these now the three components are invariable in both of these ptosis, meiosis and anhydrosis along with anophthalmus. However, in congenital, the striking difference is that there is iris heterochromia. Okay, The iris of the baby born with a congenital Horner syndrome, one eye has one color, the other eye has another color. So, that is the differentiating point between congenital and acquired Horner syndrome. Now, the cause is birth trauma in congenital type and a Pancoast tumor, you can see the tumor at the apex of the lung in this x-ray. So, the pancoast tumor is the important cause of Horner's syndrome in acquired type. Now, for confirmation, it is confirmed by the cocaine test. Horner's syndrome is confirmed by the cocaine test. When I instill cocaine in the eyes, there is 10 millimeters dilatation of the pupil in the normal eye within one hour. The normal eye, pupil of the normal eye dilates by 10 millimeters, but the Horner's pupil does not dilate. Okay, that's how you'll differentiate. In cocaine's test, Horner's pupil does not dilate. The normal pupil dilates. Okay, that was about the pupillary reactions and the pupillary pathologies. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sai Suguna, your mentor for ophthalmology at MediCoab. Now, thanks for watching the video. Now we have put such videos all together in our ophthalmology app. The trial version you can download from the link over here or in the description box below.